How do people? And welcome back to another guitar edition of the Educating Medicating Dr. D. We've got a special one for you today. It's not a secret, is it? Because you've seen it on thumbnail. But we have got the limited edition, just released, limited edition Fender George Harrison Rocky Strat. Now these sold out within the first 24 hours over, well, throughout the world, I think, at the, at the moment. I'm not fully sure. But um, I was lucky enough to get my hands on one. Now it says on the top serial number 51, so it's quite a low number. Now, there's a couple of reasons why I wanted this guitar. One, the history of the guitar, obviously. Now, the Rocky Strat has played on some of the most important records, important albums the Beatles ever did. So, or the, you know, the, the world has ever seen. So, you know, I am the walrus and all sorts of mad psychedelic stuff. So there's that side of it, and there's also the side of it, how he painted it and why he painted it and stuff like that interests me, you know what I mean? So I'm going to go into it. A lot of people who usually watch my channel will uh, really, I think it'll, it'll connect to him really about this guitar. So without further ado, let's open her up and see how she blows. I'm really looking forward. Now another reason with this as well, I saw the video on Anderton's and uh, Pete mentioned it to USA and I thought, USA? But the they've already just brought the custom shop out and the custom shop was £25,000. Now this were uh, £1,850 with this. Now I thought, that's bloody cheap. Is that into a USA? It's not a USA, it's a Mexican. Now I ordered the guitar and then I cancelled the guitar because I said, I'm not, I said I'm not paying that much money for, for a Mexican guitar. I said, that's ridiculous. But I'm glad I did. <laughs> You'll understand why. If you see prices that they, they're up for sale for, I'm glad I did. So without further ado, let's open it up and see what we've got here. Again, I'm really, really looking forward to this. I want to see quality of it as well. Coming from Mexico. Now Anderton's should have op opened this and done a, a point check, you know, the whatever point check they do to make sure it's all all right. So I don't think I'll be the first person to, uh, to mess about with this, you know what I mean? But yeah, let's give it a open. Ooh. Looking forward to it, looking forward to it, people. Now, first of all, some of you see different from a lot of Mexican strats. It's come in a period correct black case. Now, look at that. You don't see many Mexican strats that come in an odd case like that. And that is a full period correct early 60s flat case, that's impressive is that, here's a good quality case as well, unbelievable, right, I'll open it up from afar, so you can see it first, and then I'll do some closing shots, here we go people, are we ready, can you see it there, let me just, let me just move that camera down a bit, so we can see it, here we go, here we go people, the big reveal. Oosh, oosh, oosh. Here we go, I'll let you see it first. What we're saying people? Oh dear me, look at that. That, <laughs> with what I can see, looks a nice, look at that paint. Absolute, beautiful. Now I weren't sure on these, because you've, you've seen the custom shop ones and they're a bit of kit. And I thought, surely, from £25,000 to £2,000, there's got to be a big difference. Now I'm not going to lie, I've not seen the uh, the custom shop version of it. They're all master built by uh, Andy, Andy Waller, is it? Something like that, Andy somewhat. So they've all been handmade. Now these have been hand painted. I'm not sure how they painted it. They probably painted, because I, want, I watched a video on the custom shop one and they said it did paint by numbers. So I'm presuming that's what they've done, because they're all unpainted. Again, limited to a thousand pieces. Let's pick her up. Now I want to feel quality, and then I'm also going to go into it. How George painted this, because I've heard some right daft comments, but let's have a look at it first. Look at that. Oh, that neck, people. That's absolutely stunning. It's got lovely rounded edges on that. If it didn't have a MX, number 51, it, if it didn't have MX on the serial number, there's not a chance you would know that that were made. You'd think it were made in USA. So there's no way 
Well, I'm saying that. I think we've been fobbed off anyway with uh, Mexican and uh, USA models. Because on the box, it says it's all packed up and everything in California, so I don't know what they're doing out there. I think they just they just pay Mexicans a bit of cheaper money. That's the only difference between a Mexican and a USA strat nowadays, for, me, for my opinion. But look at that paint. You can see it's all fully hand painted. You can feel textures and job lot. It is really, really nice. Look at that. Even put the blob of paint there as was as is on the original. Really, really nice. Let's have a look ahead of it. Again, you can see Clapton there. Oh, I've noticed something there on the originals. Clapton's here comes over onto that bit. This dump. But absolute, I'm impressed with that. That's phenomenal. Case. Let's have a quick browse and see what candy we get, if any. Now, obviously, it's not going to be like the custom shop one that come in with a full extra case, didn't it? Uh, a full extra case with loads of different bits in it. So, let's have a look what we've got in here. Oof. You don't need to see them, do you? We have got the hang tags. Keep them nice and neat, people, because whether you like it or not this guitar is going to be a collectible guitar so you've got all your hang tags there set of keys for your case your fender uh, your fender warranty card book some picks some special picks there go cat go different picks for george harrison and obviously your trem arm and your back plate that's another thing, let's have a look at the back plate. Oh, there's not five strings in it, so it's all basically locked down the trim system. And there's no holes at all there. Serial number. I'm going to keep that on there. Serial number. Can you see it? Hopefully you can. Where are we? There. Number 51. So it's a very low number. Now, down to paint to this. I've seen some comments. And I've seen some amusing comments. People said it looks like it looks like it's been painted by a child. You've got to put your head, people, into the the same place as where George Harrison were. Now you've got to think what was going on in the Beatles' lives, or many people's lives, in 1967. Again, George Mal Mal, Mal they sent Mal out uh, to go and get two matching um, matching Fender straps. Uh, Mal went out and he come back with two Sonic Blue, the original colour, two Sonic Blue matching straps. That were 1965. Now, from 1965 going up to 1967 was the psychedelic times. Now, this is where I'm saying a lot of people that usually watch my channel will really, really, they'll connect to this bit. And I'm buzzing with it. This is why I, another reason why I'm really, really want to have a look at this guitar. You've got to think the mindset of what George was in. He's not sat down and thought, oh, I'll just paint my guitar there. You've got to think, George, when he painted this guitar, was absolutely off his trolley, chipping his box off on LSD. Now, you've got to think, LSD people, I won't lie, I've, took quite a, I've sampled quite a bit myself, and the old school 80s purple arms and things like that wouldn't touch the sides of what these boys were taking. Now, you've got to think, the first time that the Beatles took LSD was uh, at the dentist. He went for a meal with a dentist and he put a drop in all the brews without the knowing. We didn't even know. Now you've got to think, <laughs> sorry people, if you're just a guitar people, you're going to think, what's this guy on about? But if you're into other stuff, you'll know. You've got to think, when you get a blotter, loads and loads of little acid tabs, if you will, one drop will probably fill about 10 tabs. So you've got to think, that LSD that they were having, they had one drop a piece. They were out of their minds completely. They were in another world. <laughs> Never mind people saying, oh, it looks like it's painted by a child. You've got to think how George did this. Now, with sunlight, it glows up a bit more. But when you look at the normal thing, these two colours are not strongly visible under normal light. So that led me to believe that George, how he must have painted this, George must have been sat let's say i don't know where in a room somewhere all tired eye about bit of lava lamps going things like that and he must have had uv light some tubing some old school tubing to 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 make it all black light all over the place 
and you think how he did it, he must have been sat there off his head, probably sat with the guitar, probably playing his guitar, being, being, doing a bit of slide as he did, being about, and he just must have thought, in his own world, I'm gonna paint my guitar. And he went and got paint. Now you've got to think of the mindset he was in when he started painting this. It must have been all glowing up. I'm gonna take the guitar, we're gonna go out and show it under black light soon. But he must have been sat there, painting guitar. Now you've got to think, if you've been in that state of mind that they were in, when he's painting this, you can see it's all over the place. It's not a good job, it's not a fancy job. If he sat down Compass Mentors, he'd probably done a great job. But you've got to think the, the mindset he was in. When he was doing these brush strokes in ultraviolet light, off his head, they would have been completely tracing. It'd have been getting traces off them. It again, it again, as he was brushing it, it'd have been, the paint would have been moving visibly towards him. His eyes and stuff would have been moving. Now, I'm gonna have a good look under ultraviolet and see, because I think there's been, well, we know that there's been stages of creation of this guitar. Now, I think he's been absolutely off his trolley and he's done this first bits of paint these big bits you can see I think he did all them first out of his trolley and then as he slowly started to come down throughout the days he started to fill in now we know again this was meant to be Pat, Pat's uh, Patty's nail varnish so all that come later on and you've got to think what state of mind first of all what state of mind are you in to paint your guitar now i know it's different times nowadays and people don't do things like that and in them days a lot of people do i mean john lennon painted his rolls royce they were painting their houses they were painting everything so i suppose painting a guitar with nothing towards him i mean who's gonna bloody paint your car can you imagine going outside and painting your car but one of the things that makes me think how out of this world they must have been he painted eric clapton on his guitar now you if you sat with any of your mates you think how many of your mates you'd paint on your guitar? <laughs> Never mind about painting your strat, painting a picture of your friend on headstock. He had to be completely out of his brain. So we're gonna have a look in a minute. I'm gonna take it into UV. We're gonna have a look in black light and see how it is. Oh, set up, right, set up straight out at box. Look at it, Anderton. <laughs> Action's fantastic, setup fantastic. It's even in tune, it's fully in tune. Slightly out, maybe. But bloody hell, that's straight out at Bob. That's fantastic, I'm absolutely impressed, the quality of it. Let me show you the neck. A little bit of flame going on there. Can we see it? I mean, that's spot. a little bit of flame going on. Oh, the Greenwoods, uh, Greenwoods Maidstone, the music people. So it's got the old thing. That's absolutely impressive, people. Absolutely impressive. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Right, I'm gonna take it inside for you and I'm gonna show you what it's like lit up under ultraviolet light. All right, here we go, people. Get ready. This is spectacular, is this? And this is what I'm saying when I say George Harrison was sat and to a paint of this guitar with UV lights on. Get ready. Boom. Look at that. Now you can see what I'm saying here. When he must have been painting that, all them lines must have been absolutely tracing. Now, can you see the dots? I think when he painted it, that's what he did first. He did all them dots and he did the paint. He didn't do the head, he just did the dots and the paint. But look at that. So you imagine if you're tripping your box off, sat there playing this guitar, you're gonna be buzzing. And then later on, because if you notice, the the other paint isn't ultraviolet, it doesn't glow up, so this is proper word, I forgot what paint it is, but let's have a look at the head. Bang, look at that! Look at that, look at Eric! 
He's looking good there, isn't he, Eric? Look at that, people. So there you go. One guitar. I mean, how many fenders? How many fender strats? Oh, that's someone else as well. It's one of the only fenders that doesn't have fender on the headstock. Did you know that, people? There you go. Well, there you go, people. A bit of black light action for you. Absolutely stunning. Right. Well, here we have it, people. The George Harrison Rocky Strat. Don't she look good until under ultraviolet? And you can see what I'm talking about with the paint and things like that. So, I must admit, I won't lie. I was buying this, it was my 50th birthday over there, and I was buying it for my 50th birthday present to myself. But, as the prices have absolutely shot up, I can't afford not to sell it. So if anybody's interested in making me a reasonable offer, a good sensible offer, send us a message, leave a message down below, a comment down below, I'll let you know how to get hold of me, and we can sort it out. This can be in your hands in the next few days, people. As long as you make me a good offer. <laughs> not a cheap one as well not a cheap one right people on that note you enjoy whatever you're smoking eating or talking stay high stay medicated but most of all in these times stay chilled you have a good one cuckoo ca